Here I've got a funny little calculation of a trig value for a seemingly random angle. In particular, we will calculate a closed form for sine of five and five eighths degrees. So of course, most nice values of trig functions occur at certain rational values of pi radians. So that really points to our first step, which will be to convert five and five eighths degrees into radians. So let's do that. So we'll first notice that five and five eighths is really just kind of terrible notation for the object five plus five eighths. Why do I say it's not very good notation? Well, because kind of it looks like multiplication of five times five eighths, when in fact it means five plus five eighths. And then notice that five is the same thing as 40 over eight. So we have 40 over eight plus five over eight, which tells us that we have 45 over eight. But luckily 45 degrees but luckily 45 degrees is easy to translate into radians and moreover, the sine and the cosine of 45 degrees is well known. So let's maybe convert it into radians. So this is pi over four radians over eight. So 45 degrees is pi over four radians, but notice that this simplifies to pi over 32. So that means in fact, we wanna calculate sine of pi over 32. But how could we do that? Well, notice that we know that the sine of pi over four is equal to the square root of two over two. That's a well-known value for the sine function. Then maybe we've got some sort of trigonometric identity that will allow us to use this value to build our goal value, in particular sine of pi over 32. Well, notice that pi over four divided by two is pi over eight, divided by two is pi over 16, divided by two is pi over 32. So perhaps we can use the half angle formula three times. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, so that being said, let's get the half angle formula on the board over here. On the last board, we motivated the fact to consider sine of pi over four, which is the square root of two over two, and multiple applications of the half angle formula. Let's recall that half angle formula. This can be derived pretty easily several different ways. I would maybe derive it with the complex exponential. That's a really nice way to derive trigonometric identities. So we've got sine of theta over two is equal to the square root of half one minus cosine theta. For our first step, that would be particularly nice because we know cosine of pi over four is the square root of two over two as well. But for subsequent steps, we probably wanna put everything in terms of sine, just for ease of use. So we can take cosine theta and rewrite it as the square root of one minus sine squared theta. That's because cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one, the Pythagorean identity. Furthermore, when taking the square root, we can take the positive square root, which means this minus sign stays a minus sign because all of these angles are occurring in the first quadrant. Which angles am I talking about? Well, pi over four, pi over eight, pi over 16, and finally pi over 32, which is our final goal. So all of that being said, let's get to our calculation and we'll do it one little bit at a time. So we'll start with the calculation of sine of pi over eight. So let's just rewrite our half angle formula using the fact that pi over eight is one half of pi over four. So that's gonna give us the square root of one half, and then we have one minus the square root of one minus sine squared of pi over four. But let's notice that sine squared of pi over four will be this squared, which gives us one half. So let's rewrite this just as one half, keeping in mind here that this one half is in fact the sine squared of pi over four. So now let's do a little bit of simplification here. We can maybe take this and rewrite it as the square root of, I'm gonna distribute this through. So we'll have one half minus one half times the square root of one half. 
And now this is a closed form for sine of pi over eight, but this is not the standard closed form. And in order to get the standard closed form, I'm gonna take, take each of these halves and rewrite them as two over four. Then I can factor the four out of the square root. That'll give me a one half because we have to take the square root of four. We'll be left with two minus, well, we have two times the square root of one half, but bringing this two in, we'll see that we have four over two. So we have two minus the square root of two. And this is our standard format for the sine of pi over eight. Something that you might see if you look up values of sine of pi over eight somewhere online, like Wikipedia or something. So now that we've got this, let's apply this identity another time to give us the sine of pi over 16, which will be the square root of half and then we've got one minus the square root of one minus the sine squared of pi over eight. Now it's really just a matter of doing really careful arithmetic here. So we'll take this sine squared of pi over eight, which is right here, and we'll replace it with this thing that I have, which is underlined in purple. So let's see what that leaves me with. I've got the square root of one half minus one half times the square root. So notice I just distributed this half through and then I'll have one minus. So if I square this, I will get one quarter times two minus the square root of two. So notice this square root cancels with the square and then this half turns into a quarter. Okay, so let's begin simplifying. So I can do the same kind of thing that I did right here, take these one halves and write them as two over four and bring the four out. That will leave me with a half and then I'll have the square root of two right here minus the square root of, well, I've got a two that I can bring inside to turn into a four and then minus well, four over four is equal to just one. So we just have minus two plus the square root of two, because that's what happens when that minus sign hits that minus sign, it cancels down into a plus. And now we can combine the four and the two, and that'll leave us with half. And then we have the square root of two minus the square root of two plus the square root of two. So we've got something like that. So there's some nice structure to these objects, which are sine of pi over a power of two, it looks like. So let's maybe go ahead and bring this to the top and we've got one final calculation. So far, we've calculated the sine of pi over 16 using the half angle formula twice, along with the fact that the sine of pi over four is root two over two. Now we're ready to calculate our goal value here, which is the sine of five and five eighths degrees, which we earlier noticed was equal to pi over 32 radians, which is in fact pi over 16 over two radians, which means we can apply this half angle formula together with this value that we just got. Okay, so let's see what that is all going to leave us with. Applying the half angle formula, we'll have the square root of one half and then minus and then one minus the square root of one minus sine squared evaluated at pi over 16. So we'll do a similar step as we had done before. We'll take this half out of the entire square root that will leave us with a two inside of the square root. So let's talk our way through that. If we multiply this half through, it becomes a one quarter because to enter the square root, we must square whatever we have. Then we'll have two over four, which is half. Now we'll be left with one minus the square root of one minus sine of pi over 16 squared. So that's gonna be one quarter times two minus the square root of two plus the square root of two. But now let's notice that all of this will expand to give us half plus one quarter times the square root of two plus the square root of two. And then furthermore, when we multiply two onto these terms, well, multiplying it onto this just becomes a one. Multiplying it inside of this green square root, it will become a four because we have to square it and we're left with our final answer. So we have one half and then the square root of 
2 minus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2, where those have all been nested. So we've got this nesting of square roots of 2, starting with a minus and then ending with two pluses. And that's in fact a nice closed form for the sign of this crazy angle. But it further gives us some motivation how we could calculate a closed form for the sine of pi over 2 to the n. Then maybe write in the comments what you think the closed form of sine of pi over 2 to the n is based off what we have seen here. And that's a good place to stop.